Shalom, welcome to Hebrew with Mayim. Today we're going to be learning Hebrew from the Torah portion, Pinchas, which is found in Numbers chapter 25, verse 10 through 30, verse 1. Vaidaber Adonai el Moshe Lemor. And Hashem spoke to Moses saying, Pinchas ben el Azar, Pinchas, son of Eleazar, Ben Aharon, the son of Aaron, um, Hakohen, he, Heshiv, yes? Mm -hmm. Right. Heshiv et Hamati, et Hamati. Okay. You want to make the vowel of the Chet shorter than normal because it has a Shavah. Khmati. Yes, good. Okay, so this is Pinchas, son of Eleazar, son of Aaron. Um, the 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 Kohen, the priest. What is Heshiv et Khmati? Heshiv, I believe you can figure out at least somewhat. If I scroll this way. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Some okay. Is it like Lashevet? That's a good, good yeah. guess. You, but there's some other word that I know that you know, like, which uh, is related. Like, to, like the word teshuva. Right. And what does that literally mean? Return. Good. Mm -hmm. What is the what is the infinitive of teshuva? Lashuv. Lashuv. Okay. Teshuva is as a noun, right? It means. That's correct. It, does it mean like returning or repentance or the? It's a noun and it means literally returning. Returning. Okay. Yeah, but in English you could also say the act of returning. Okay. Okay. And then heshiv. What's heshiv? All right, so the infinitive of this, instead of lashuv, which is to return, the infinitive is going to be lahashiv. Oh, it's not, it isn't lashuv, it's related to lashuv. Correct. Lahashiv, I don't know. When, when you have a he, which is not a definite article, right, because he is the definite article. So sometimes he is at the beginning of a word and it's not a definite article, in su such as in this case. And when it has a sere underneath it, for example, that's a good indicator that it's not a definite article. And usually it's also not a part of the root. In that case, it's usually going to let you know that this is the, this basically means that the action is being applied to something else. Hmm. And you, you can see that with it being followed by the word et. But you, you don't, even without the word et, you can see it in the word itself. In other words, it's not reflexive. It's not saying it's, it's being applied to myself. And it's also not just saying to return, but it's saying, because um, like, the, it does mean to return, okay, first of all, that's what it means. But in English, the word return is used both for when you're, you yourself are returning, and also when you return something else. But in Hebrew, there's a difference in the way this, the word's pronounced. You can hear that it's different. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so can you give me the, the example of both? Both mean to return. You would translate both to return, right. but there's a difference. Mm -hmm. Because in English, to return can be used both um, in reference to yourself, it can be in general, and it can also be that you're returning an article, which okay. but in is Hebrew, applying, right. But in Hebrew, they're the same root word, but they're pronounced slightly differently. So in Hebrew, if you're talking about returning, um, but not applying, like you are not causing something to be returned, right? If you are not causing something to be returned, but you're just saying that something is going to return, then you would say leshuv. If okay. you, and that's that's um well, to stay on track. And then if you're talking about you are causing something to be returned, mm -hmm. you're or going someone, to use, or even someone is causing someone something. Cor correct, correct. Uh -huh. Or some someone is causing someone to be returned. It doesn't make any difference. Then you're going to use the hashiv. 
And you can hear in the infinitive the hey as well, la hashiv. I got it. Okay. And and the presence of the hey means something is causing something to right. do again. To right. Do something else. Right. And this isn't this way in every single verb in Hebrew, but it, it's often. Okay. Got it. But I'll probably forget. You'll remember. <laughs> okay. Heshiv et chmati. What's chmati? All right. So you know that something is be. I want you to explain to me what you know so far. It'll help you figure it out. Um, you mean like the translation? Right. And I'm going to give you a um, spoiler a little bit. Instead of translating it literally to make such and such return, right? Translate it as turn away. Okay, but I have, you know what? I haven't even read this verse in English yet. That's good. I have no idea. I know you're not cheating. <laughs> I can very easily. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, really. It's good to figure stuff out, like to I learn how to figure stuff out with what you already have. I don't Hebrew's know. great for that. I can't figure this word out. All right. Um, do you know how to say sun? Sh shemesh? Mm hmm And do you know another word for sun? No. Do you know how to say heat or hot? Nope. Okay. So another word for sun is hamma. Okay. All right? Hamma. And ham means hot. Mm hmm Ham is hot. Right. Hamma is heat. You could actually translate this as to, to make my son return with an S-O-N. I'm sorry, S-U-N. <laughs> <laughs> um, but here it's not referring to the sun, it's referring to... S-U-N. Right. Here it's not referring to S-U-N, it's referring to... Well, let's just, let's translate to see if there's anything else in here do you, that you know the definition of. Okay. Me'al, that is from on. Right. B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel. Okay, so oh. translate up to this point so far. And, and just say such and such. When you say chamati, just say something of mine, my something, okay? Okay. Pinchas, the, Pinchas, the son of El Eleazar, the son of Aharon, the Kohen, the priest, um, returned. Or turned oh, away. Or turned away. Something. What, but it's my, my something. My something. My glory. Right, you know it's my, right? Okay. Right, did, did you know that? I, well, mm. because of the T. Good, okay. Me'al, um, from, upon, the children of Israel. Benin. Good. Okay. So Pinchas, El, Pinchas, the son of El Azar, the son of Aaron, the priest, turned away my, <clears throat> from, upon, the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Should I Does keep that help? Yeah, the next word will really give it away if you know the meaning of the next word. Bikan, bikan o. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. It's from the word, okay. Bikan o, it's kinati. Kina is the noun. Do you know what kina means? Nope. Kina means um, jealousy or it can mean zealousness. Okay, okay, my anger. This is anger. Good, good, good. Okay. All right, so this word for anger, and there's several words for anger in Hebrew. This is not the most common, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's extremely rare. Mm -hmm. And it's from the root for heat. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like he's, he, he was inflamed in yeah. anger, right? Yeah. You might say fury. That, that, I don't know you could, yeah, yeah, good, good. That's, My fury. Yeah, because it reminds me of fire. Great. Interesting. There might be a connection in English with that. Good. And then I don't, okay, so, um, okay, so this is how, I know this has something to do with jealousy, you said, right? Right. But what, what would it mean exactly? In His being jealous, but in the sense of zealous. And you notice jealous and zealous are also related in English. In Hebrew, they're the same word. Okay, uh, who's, who's his, though, his being jealous? Referring to Hashem? It will help you if you read the next two words. You'll understand. Mm. Et, et kin, 
Et kin ati. Mm -hmm. oh. And even you don't even have to read that. Who's right when it says hamati? What is the T? My. Right. And who's saying my? Hashem, right? Right. So then who is the his? I don't know. Well, you know it's not Hashem, Moshe? most likely. Moshe? All right. So we'll start from the beginning of the verse. Pichas? Mm hmm. Uh, Pichas ben Elazar ben Aharon Hakohen. Heshiv et Hamati, Hamati Me'al. Right, translate it. Yeah. Um, so Pinchas the Elazar, yeah. Pinchas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, um, turned away the fury. Not just the fury. My fury. Good. Upon the children of Israel. Is this a verb? It is. Uh, okay, could we say and was zealous it, and and his go ahead. and was zealous? But there's a oh. Okay, so it, I forgot that. It's and and it's not a verb. It's a what do you call it? It's like teshuva. It's a noun for a verb. Uh huh. Oh. And his and his jealousy. Good, yeah, yeah. My jealousy. Mm hmm. Beto betocham. Mm. Again, I don't know what that means. Ah, uh, but you remember you had this word before, right? No. Betoch. Yeah. What does betoch mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. All right. So you asked, you asked, who's jealousy? Who's, who's zeal, right? Mm -hmm. Jealousy, zeal, zealousness, it all is the same word in Hebrew. So you asked, who's, who is the his, but kan o. So just go back to the beginning of the sentence. Pinchas ben Alazar, oh, the son Pinchas. of Aaron. It's Pinchas is um, zealous. Right. Yeah. It's really the only persons that could be here. You said zealous and jealous are the same thing in Hebrew? In Hebrew, yeah. Wow, it's, but in English, they're completely different things, right? They're different, but you notice, like, they are related, both, both phonetically and also in the concept. Like a Because, yeah, it's like a strong passion. It's a type of passion. Okay. Okay. Because he, he was zealous for my zealous... <laughs> right, right. Zealousness. Okay. This word, bakano, is actually a verb, but you're going to translate it in English as a noun. Mm -hmm. Kina is the actual noun for the verb. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, bitocham below. Chiliti et bene Israel bekin ati. Okay, help me. All right, betoch. I'm just gonna give it to you. Uh, is it like between? That's close. It means within. Okay. Or from among them or within them. Okay. Usually, it's gonna be within. Okay, the the am part is them, right? Correct. Okay. You can also say toch, but most of the time it's batoch. And the ba is just sort of reiterating the inside aspect. Okay. What well, sorry, what does what oh, okay, okay. Got it. But remember try to remember toch or batoch, because it's it's common. Kind of common. Mm-hmm. Within. It's more of within. Yeah, I mean, think of how many times you hear in, in, in the Bible, in English, from among them, in their midst, mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so let me try it. Okay. So, Pinchas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the, the priest, 
turned away the fury, mm -hmm. my, my fury, from among the children of Israel. From over, from upon. From upon the children of Israel. What did I say? Among? I think he's, yeah, it was not the translation. Okay. From upon the children of Israel, um, with his zealousness. Right. And again, it's, you want to translate this like it's a noun, but it's not technically a noun right here. It's technically his having, there's no way you can translate it literally to English. Okay. It's a verb. <laughs> look real quick, okay? Go ahead. <laughs> From the children of Israel by his zealousy. They translated it with two words. Zealously avenging. Zealously avenging me. That's kind of, uh, I, don't, I mean, that's sort of interpretive, but I understand it. He was, he was, he was zealously, uh, what was it again? Zealously avenging. avenging. Yeah, but that's. that's and this, right? They yeah, but it's not, it's not really literal and it's a little bit interpretive. But that's fine. I mean, okay. there are different it's types of translations. Because, because it's hard to interpret this literally. Right, yeah. You can't literally translate everything and it makes sense grammatically in English. It may be, it literally would it be like, he was zealous for my, for, for my zealousness. <sighs> he was zealous. Keen ati. Yeah. Just a moment. Okay, so the thing here is that in the word kan o, even if you remove the o, it means he, that he, a single male is doing it. The o added at the end means that this act of being zealous, which it's more of a, you know, it's not a specific act, but the verb of being zealous, that o means that it's being applied. Yeah, to... to. I'm sorry. The can o, just a moment. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. You, it's almost like to emphasize. You don't even actually have to have the o there. Mm -hmm. By context, you wouldn't have to have it, but it sounds a little bit bland. It I don't if, know how to say it. If you say it in con uh, literally, it would like be he zealed him. You know how you know how if you have singular masculine um, imperfect. I'm sorry, perfect singular masculine perfect, right? That's going to be the most simple form of a verb in Hebrew, mm -hmm. right? Like halach, diber, right? You know those words, right? Yeah, so wa he walked, he... Right, so if you said, if you said, um, it's like saying he, he walked, said himself. he said himself. Right, right, like, you don't have to add, you don't have to add the O oh all the time when you're talking about someone doing something because it's already understood in the conjugation of the verb, but it happens sometimes for emphasis or for whatever reason, whether it's just the way people normally speak, we have in English also cases where we say things that aren't necessary exactly, but yeah, okay. I just want you to know that it's 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 on a literal level. You, it, it doesn't. Emphasis. You could say that, yeah, but it's going to be hard to translate that literally. Like okay. I don't think you can. Okay. So he he was zealous himself for my zealous. <laughs> yes. I, okay. <laughs> I mean, even that's kind of a little bit non-exact, but let's go ahead. <laughs> it's not... um, okay. Fr um, from among. Not from among. In between? Within. Good. Within them. Good. Okay. okay. Or among them or in their midst. Okay. And then we would put like maybe a comma right here. Right. And remember, fra is going to be the prefix mem. Me. Like me'al, from okay. over, from and, upon. And bit is more in. Right. Okay. It could be other things, but not from. Okay. <clears throat> Velo, kili, velo, 
חיליתי. חיליתי. ולא חיליתי. But the, but the trope is under li, right? Right, right, right. What is, but you're saying that... No, I just didn't hear any vowel for the chaf. It sounded like you did a shva. Oh, okay. Chiliti et b'nei Yisrael v'kin ati. So what's chiliti? I forgot. I don't know. It's not extremely common, but it means like to finish off something. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I didn't finish off. So that right. I would not destroy. Et right. You would, you would want to interpret this if you translate it. Bekin ati. I guess you could say finish off. Not one you could probably get away with literally. Huh? You could probably get away with literally translating it. But normally we would say to, to like destroy. Okay. So that I wouldn't finish off the children. Con of or consume. Right. Or consume. In my, in my, in my zealous. Right. And most translations are going to say gel uh, uh, jealousy. Okay. So, okay. He jealous. My jealousy. He jealous himself. He had passion or he had zeal <laughs> okay. for, for my zealousness. Okay. But basically, these are all the same verb. Be, right. Bekan, bekan o, mm -hmm. hin a ti, and Bekin ati, but it wouldn't make sense to translate them all with the same English word literally. When it's talking about God, I personally prefer avoiding saying jealous because it sounds kind of like an immature emotion, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. That's the that's a theological issue. Okay. <clears throat> I can neither confirm nor deny your statement. <laughs> okay. Next. <laughs> Go right ahead. Pasukaba. You you're saying you prefer zealous, right? Yeah. Or or like passion or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, passion sometimes is seen as a Right, you're right. Yeah. It's a strong word. Yeah. It, it seems like it makes him seem like he's emotional and we don't Right. Want well, that's unavoidable with this word. This is a very emotional word. The thing is, I think that's an American mindset, though, to to see God as non to see emo being emotional as something negative instead of positive. I think that's an American thing, or a Western thing. I think could in be. third world, I mean, we could talk. I would I would love to say a lot about it, but then we'll get off the Hebrew. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, here, lachen <clears throat> emor. Okay, can we talk about that? Mm -hmm. what is the chen is a fairly common word. Not extremely common, but it's common enough. It okay. means therefore. Oh, okay. It's not related to chen. Like, what is that? I think that it is. You may oh. translate it as and so or and thus. And as we learned before, ken means actually like thus or it is so. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Hence, I was yes. thinking more of like the word chen, was, isn't it? Isn't chen like? That's with a het. Oh, different letter. You're thinking about grace or favor, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Which is one of the advantages of, even if you don't always speak that way, try to make a note of the different pronunciation when you're learning words. As I really recommend anyone using as accurate a pronunciation as possible when they're learning by themselves. Unless it's something that they're planning to publicly speak in a in a situation that they it would be awkward to speak accurately, but learning the accurate pronunciation helps tremendously with the spelling. Otherwise, like if you ever try to learn to write, you won't know if it's aleph he or ein. You won't know if it's tet or tav. You won't know if it's you know you won't know if it's kaf or kuf and so forth. What is the difference between kaf and chet? Sound. Het, it's ha, and chaf is ha. Het has no friction with the soft palate and the roof of your mouth. Chaf is exactly that. Chaf is specifically friction between the back of your tongue and the back roof of your mouth, the soft palate. Do, do het again? Het, het is just a constriction of the throat as you exhale. Whereas, What's the difference between het and he then? There, very good. That's what I was about to say. So, hey, 
and het are the same. The difference, there is a difference, but they're made the same way with the only difference being that when you say het, it is slightly constricted. Whereas when you say he, it should be completely relaxed. And the only difference between het and ein, ein is also supposed to have a sound. And you'll see if you really examine this, it's like a stair step. It's actually like a cycle as, as far as how these sounds are made. So he is just exhaling relaxed. Het is exhaling with a constricted throat muscles, no friction on the soft palate. You know what the soft palate is, right? Uh, no. So if you feel with your tongue, the roof of your mouth, you'll feel that it's hard right behind your teeth. Go further back and you'll feel that the roof of your mouth becomes soft. Mm -hmm. So that soft part is called the soft palate. Okay. So chaf is made by having friction between the back of your tongue and that soft part of the roof of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's in contrast to the letter het, which is essentially a he with the throat muscles constricted. Ha. So instead of ha, it's ha. Okay, and, and where does ein fit in? Okay, and so um, ein is the exactly like het, with the only difference that it's voiced. Voiced means you're making sound with your vocal cords. And this is parallel to several other letters in that you can make in language. For example, the difference between s and z, s is made with the tip of your tongue right in the front of your mouth but you're just exhaling air oh. while having contact with the tip of your tongue in the front of your mouth right yes. right yes now notice z is the same exact position of the tongue it's made exactly the same the only difference is that it's voiced voiced means you're using your voice box i see that i see that okay so in the same way that Zine, the letter Z is a voiced S, or you could say the S is an unvoiced Z. The same thing with several other letters. V is a voiced F. F is an unvoiced V. So het is an unvoiced ein, and ein is a voiced het. Okay, yes, I get it. Mm -hmm. All right, so ein and het are both made just exhaling air while constricting your throat muscles the but only difference is that okay. go ahead no no go ahead no I, I, well, the only <laughs> the only difference is that ein is is voiced while you're constricting the throat muscles and het is unvoiced okay so you're saying but mo in modern hebrew they don't make it in modern hebrew het is chaf normatively there are still a lot of people that distinguish het and ein correctly but they're the minority and also in modern Hebrew, when they teach, they don't make the difference. They usually, everyone in Israel, it's common enough that everyone in Israel knows that that's the correct way of pronouncing it. Mm -hmm. I, when I say everyone, obviously there may be some weird, I don't know what people, but most people know that ein is really a, ah, and he is really ha, and het is really ha. It's commonly known. Okay. But they also don't pronounce the letter he, as you know. Yeah, yeah, they turn that inside. Okay. Okay. Right. So, so I mean, I, I definitely recommend everyone to at least get in their mind that these are different sounds, even if you're not perfectly pronouncing it, but to have a distinct sound when you learn these words, it'll help you <laughs> with unfamiliar words or with spelling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the other one would be Lachen. So hold on, let me see. Okay. Mercy. You're thinking in Birkat Amazon. Lahen la hasad al rahamin. Yes. So that would be hen, hen, like that. Right. right. Hen. Hen. Yeah, hen. just it's better to make it like an H than a chaf. Mm -hmm. H is actually closer to het than chaf. Okay. But okay, so when when they do when people do Birkat Amazon, do they usually do do they usually make it like a chaf or do they usually make it like a hey? I think people usually make it more like a chaf, right? Unless they're Yemenite or really traditional Sephardim. Okay. So the, the, the Yemenites and the Sephardim that are traditional. They're the same as Achim. It's more accurate. is actually more they accurate. Make it, but yeah. They make it more accurate. Right. Yep. The, um, the sounds. Okay. The Temonim more so they make greater effort than any other 
community to preserve it. Even though Iraqi Jews also had a very exact pronunciation, but Temonim are, are pretty well known. They're especially well known for even at least in the even in the younger generation. They probably hold on to it more than anyone else. Although obviously not all of them, maybe not even most, but it's noticeably more. And with het, an easy way to remember how to make the sound is that it's like exhaling onto a pair of glasses to get water vapor on the glasses if you want to clean it. <sighs> right, so it's a loud exhale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You there? You may have put it on mute. I don't hear a thing. Yeah, sorry, I was talking to my kids. Okay, so, Lachen and moi, therefore say, right? Right. Um, Hine ni, behold, noten, noten lo, et Briti Shalom. Um, I I will give him. Good. Or but what is hin what is hinni? Hineni, behold. Right, good. And it no ten no is that um I ha I have given him or I will give him? I'm giving. I'm giving. It's it's imperfect. Correct. Okay. Noten lo et briti shalom. I'm giving him my covenant of peace. Yes. Fair. Kolakavod. Okay. Okay. Next. That was easy. Vehayeta lo. And there will be to him. All right, so what gender would you say this is? Feminine. Okay, and what do you think it could be referring to? You can look at the previous pasuk. The covenant. Good. And, and it will be to him. Right. So it's literally, it's, a, it's the perfect tense, but the vav is making it will be instead of was. But Hayata is, is, was past tense. Mm -hmm. But because of the Vav, it's... Right. Will, will be. be. Right. And it will be to him. Ul zar o. Oh, what's that? Ul zar o. Zera. Acharav. Acharav. Uh, I don't know. Zera. Zera is seed. Oh, okay. And, and it's, seed. it's right. And it is always in singular, even when referring to many. Okay. So, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's one of those words. It, there, there's, there's both like, it always looks, it always looks plural, even if it refers to singular. Right. And you can it say it in plural, you can say it, but then it's going to be like individual seeds that you can actually point to, like seed seeds. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when it's like DNA, it's... When, like, st it's when like it's talking about uh, descendants, it's going to be singular. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is kind of odd for one of the epistles of Paul that it talks about a difference between seed and seeds, and it builds a case based on that which is very unusual. It makes me think that that was not Paul who wrote that verse. Because, it, because if he was... He would have known Jewish this. And knew Hebrew. Yeah. And I'm not saying this to diss Christianity or to throw away the whole New Testament, even though I, you know, I don't embrace the New Testament. But just because like, you have one problematic verse doesn't mean the entire thing is false. But this is a very obvious oddity in the writings of Paul. Like, you know, some Jews hold that he was like, well, most Jews, <laughs> if they're if they're Orthodox Jews, they hold that like basically he rebelled and everything. Even if he rebelled and was a terrible person, it, yeah. it makes no sense that he would have 
made that argument. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that doesn't disprove Jesus being Messiah. It doesn't disprove the whole picture, but that specific argument is, it doesn't make well, sense. It, it, it questions, it questions <laughs> the authorship the of that particular, of all of Paul's writings. I don't know about that because Paul didn't well, write a whole bunch of letters all together and then give them to that, someone. At least that right. Part. At least, at least that. that particular part, right. Yeah. I mean, there are manuscripts of certain epistles of Paul where some of the oldest manuscripts lack several chapters. It could be that he actually wrote some of the first chapters, but not the latter ones. Or who knows? I don't want to speculate too much right now. <laughs> that's, it's just so interesting how to point it out. <laughs> okay. Um, aha, this is um, Ahara. Mm-hmm. I don't know what Ahar means. <laughs> Ahar means after. Yes. I kind of knew that. I kind of remember that. Ahrav means behind him. Oh, okay. So this, is, this, this adds the him part? Yeah. You could also say after him. Okay. Mm-hmm. And here is it's after him. And his seed after him. Right. Okay. Brit ke kehu nat. Mm-hmm. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> you can get this one. No, I can't. Yes, you can. Oh help me. If you have a if you have a, if you have a okay. if you have a feminine noun, if you have a feminine noun and you're going to describe it with something. You're going to say... Something of. Right. So what becomes that... What changes in that word? What do you mean? Is feminine it, nouns... Go ahead. Is that Kohen? Is that word Kohen? Yes, 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 yes. Is that priesthood of? Right. Okay. Okay. In English, you wouldn't say priesthood of, but that's what it is, literally. Um, the world? <laughs> Olam? Or eternity. Oh, okay, it's eternity. An eternal priesthood. What is what is what is the literal meaning of olam? It means like as much as you could, uh, as much as you can imagine, basically. Hence, it could be like world, or it could be forever. Oh, it, it, is it more referring, the literal meaning, is it more referring to... It's more with, time? it's usually with regard to time, especially in, in the Bible. Okay. Okay. But, liter but, but it can also mean world? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but world more in a, like, cognitive sense, meaning, like, not necessarily the, the world okay. as a globe. Not necessarily to the earth, but, but like the idea you, of right. You are my world, where there are many worlds, or uh -huh. the the Jewish world, or the Muslim world, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. An abstract uh, world. And and this is tachat. Mm -hmm. But that's underneath, below. That's underneath. It also means rear end. <laughs> right. Okay. But in this context. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> Just had to throw that in, huh? It's a biblical. <laughs> <laughs> it's building your vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> trying to stick in, but making me learn modern Hebrew. It doesn't mean it's better not to use this word in modern Hebrew because rear end is more polite, and this is not really polite to say. It's this is not. where tuchis comes from, though, right? Tuchis. Right, but tuchis is better than saying tahat, even though tuchis comes from tahat. Okay. Tachat is not nice to say in Hebrew. Okay. This, so, but how, I'm sorry. Just to say, just to save you embarrassment. You started this. Go how ahead. do you spell tuchis? How do you spell it? Yeah. I mean, it's this, it's this word. That's just the way they pronounce this word in Yiddish. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just remember. Right. But it, in, in, in modern Hebrew, this doesn't just mean it's, it's more like a slang word. It's not a word that you want to use. Just to save you embarrassment if you ever try to speak to an Israeli. Okay. 
it's and, too yeah. it's it's a slang word tachet. yeah so tofus is okay but that is a little bit vulgar to say you're teaching me foul language right now is that what you're saying no i'm <laughs> I'm, I'm seriously um I'm trying to save you from embarrassment because it's a word that a lot of people learn early on and they realize that it's more equivalent to another word for donkey rather than just meaning rear end. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be weird. <laughs> That's funny. All okay. right. Let me try. Boy, to to <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I've had a lot of embarrassing moments. You can get embarrassed easily when you're trying to learn to speak a language. <laughs> I just want to help people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, and it will be to him, the and referring to the covenant. Right. <laughs> oh, and to his seed, Ahara Aharav. Great. Um, after him, Brit, right. the um, covenant, Kehunat, um, of the priesthood, covenant of the priesthood, what? yes? Right, priesthood of, of, covenant of the priesthood of? Forever. Right, so you want to translate it in a more user-friendly Yes, Wait. I don't know how to translate it in a more user friendly. So just translate olam instead of as a noun, translate it as a adjective. Okay. When you say uh, priest of eternal eternity, priesthood. good, good. Yeah. And it's eternal priesthood. But what about the tachat part? Okay, so here it, it, it's, it's under is what it actually means, but here it's being used kind of figuratively. Uh, Meaning if, like, impl um, because of. I've never thought about, about translating it as because of, but that actually makes sense. Okay. So, so um, oh, you might actually also translate it as for. Here, oh. look, they translate it as because. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. I never thought about, I mean, I, I understand what it means. I just, I never thought about how to translate it. It can also mean like, um, well, I don't want to make it too complicated. There are other ways of saying because, but because is probably the most simple way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, I, I, I understand the connection. Yeah. And that's very like biblical and use it this way mm -hmm. in colloquial Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a share. Um, that or which, kin a, kine, kine, kine. Yeah, I notice the aleph. Mm -hmm. Kine. Yeah, good. <laughs> How'd you know? Cause you told me aleph was guttural. I I remember uh, only random things. But that's hard to like. A lot of people have difficulty trying to know how to do that. Trying to do that. Good. Okay. So that's telling you though that this aleph is actually part of the root word. Mm. Which is what's the root? I mean, you can know from the previous verses. Oh, forgot. Okay. Oh yeah, the jealousy, right? Good. Okay. okay. And because it's only three letters here, it's most likely which conjugation. Um, single singular masculine. Which tense, if you call it tense? Imperfect. No? Perfect. Perfect. Right. Okay. I the perfect tense singular masculine perfect tense is the smallest way of of writing a word. Okay. It's the most basic spelling of the word. Okay. And it will usually reveal the roots. Right. Exactly. Okay. Which is why it's used in dictionaries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lelo hav. What's lelo hav? You know this word. Suffixes, Wait. prefixes. To his God. Great. Good. Okay. Um, so le is to. Mm -hmm. Elo. Elo. This word is elo. Oh, it's not eloha. Well, Actually, it is, this it is in this, but 
actually this may be Elohim because the because the Yod Vav is plural. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lelo Hav. Um, okay. Jesus God. Okay. Um, man, I wanted to ask you something else. But... Okay. Um, okay. Translate to this point. Yeah? Me? No, me. Go okay. ahead. Let's. <laughs> <clears throat> and it will be to him the covenant um, and to his seed after him <inaudible> the covenant of the co of the priesthood kehunat <inaudible> forever olam <inaudible> tahat because asher that kine he was zealous great good Lelohav for his God. Great. Vai ha per. You know this word? Mm -mm. Yeah, you do. <laughs> mm -mm. Yes, you do. Mm -mm. Absolutely. What's the root? I don't know. Okay, is it is it is it haf pe resh? Yes. You should know that. Mm -mm. Certain letters are more commonly prefixes or suffixes, and most letters are never prefixes or suffixes. Mm -hmm. So if you can learn to identify which letters are prefixes and which letters are oh, suffixes. I know that these are prefixes, right? Right. Well, then that gives you the root. I still don't know what that root is, though. Okay, put a put a dagesh, put a dot in the kaf. Kaper? Yeah, what does that sound like? I don't know. What word has, what word that you know? You, I know that you know it, you're going to be like, how did I not think of that? What word do you know has these sounds? Ka, p, Nothing. 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 Holidays. Kippur. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, what is, and what does Kippur mean? Okay, it means and and um made atonement. Good. Al Bene Yisrael for the children of Israel. Great. Woohoo! Yeah. Well, you made me work for that. No, I'm just yeah, you got you gotta work you gotta work with what you have. That's that's the biggest um, I would say advantage in Hebrew is like the, it's like a snowball effect. The more words you learn, the easier it should become because even if it's a new word, it's likely related to a word that you already know. You just have to get in the habit of trying to think, what words do I know that have these same letters? And, and try to forget about vowel sounds. For example, what threw you off with chaper is you're thinking kippur. So it sounds different. Yeah, the, so the, you have to forget the vowels and just think kapara. Mm -hmm. What do I know? That's kapara, kaperish. Okay, can let me, can I review? Go right ahead. <clears throat> and said Hashem to Moses, speaking. No, and spoke Hashem to Moses to Mo to Moses, saying, "Pinchas mm -hmm. ben El El Azar." Ben Aharon Hakohen <coughs> Pincus, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the Kohen, Eshiv et Chmati um, turned away my fury, Me'al Bene Yisrael from among the children of Israel. Not among, not among. From upon. Good. Among, upon. <laughs> it's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same. Okay. From upon <laughs> the children of Israel. But if you translated it as among, it would be okay. I mean, in English, it'd be okay. It wouldn't be as true to the Hebrew. It would be a mistranslation. Like, that gives the wrong idea. Okay, fine. Okay. From upon the children of Israel. Bekan'o, um, because... He was 
zealous himself. He himself was zealous. For good, my, good, good. For my zealousy. Et good. Ati. Betocham. Um, um, within them. Yes. Right. Within them. Below. Below. Or in their midst. I think here we would say in their midst. Okay, in their midst. Um, Velo chliti. Chiliti, chiliti, not chiliti. Don't Good. slur it together. Okay, velo right. chiliti. And, oh shit, what does that mean? Et bene Israel bekin ati. Oh, and I did not finish off. Can you see if they translate as finish or to consume? I bet they say consume. Destroy. Oh, uh, destroy. I bet mm -hmm. Christian translations usually say consume here. Mm -hmm. Is it related to eating? No. Well, I think that it might be related to eating. Okay. Because when you eat, something becomes a part of you. And this word, I don't know if this is related to the word um coal which means all or whole of something oh, yeah, yeah. or if or if which is related um, which is what i think the word eating may be related to or and i don't okay so i don't know if it's coming from the word all coal or if it's like a separate root with maybe a hay there that's just not showing up i'm not sure mm -hmm. okay but literally it's finish off right it's used for finish to finish not, not, and not even necessarily to destroy. It's the word that's used when it says God, God completed the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. God finished the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. And it might be related to kol, for all, because it's like when God made all, you know, like when it was done, yeah. finished, it's mm -hmm. all done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it makes sense. I think either way, you translate, yeah. I can picture it. Mm -hmm. So, v'lo <clears throat> chiliti, Et bene Israel. So I, 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 I will not finish the children of Israel off or consume them or destroy right. them. Bekin ati in my zealousy. Lachen, therefore, emor, say, Hineni, behold, noten lo, I'm giving, I'm giving him, et briti, my covenant, shalom. Of peace. Ve hai ve um and it will be lo to him u zaro and to his seed acharav after him following him uh brit kehunat olam uh, an eternal this is eternal covenant right. of the priesthood. Great. And the word for priesthood, it's priest sounds sort of like a sort of like a generic term of, of like a religious person, but it, it's it means like one who serves or ministers. Mm -hmm. It's specifically in the temple, right? Right, but not only in the temple. The word is used in some places and other contexts as well, in the sense of That's ministers. True. Right like the whole nation of Israel. Right, and also King, some of the sons of King David are called Kuhun, um, Kuhanim, in the sense of administrators or ministers. For his kingdom. It's also, so what? For, for, the, for, for the kingdom of Israel. Right, exactly. Okay. One who, is, one who is in a position of public service. But specifically for Hashem. As a representative of Hashem. In, in, in the context of the Torah, yeah. I don't know about linguistically. Okay. Okay. Um, tachat, asher, because that, kin e, um, he was zealous, leloha, for his God. Vai, vai chaper, um, and made atonement. Al bene Yisrael for the children. Great, great. It's literally and he atoned. Okay. Cool. And he atoned. Yeah, fair. Good and, job. I said and he made atonement, right? But it's right, which is an acceptable translation. That's fine. Yeah, but more literally, this is the word, the verb. And he atoned, right.
All right. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed learning with me.